Welcome to the Sanctuary. I'm Kyle, and I'm here to tell you, never be afraid to step into the pleasure den of the absurd. Tonight, we're going to talk about this controversial album here, Led Zeppelin's Coda. I bought this for, I believe, two ninety nine. dollars in a, I believe it was a Grand Union. It was definitely in Bergenfield, New Jersey. <laughs> because they had a cutout bin full of records pretty much as soon as you walked in the door. <laughs> the story goes is that Ahmet Erdogan, president of Atlantic Records, told those guys that, hey, uh, your contract says you still owe us one more album. So this album was pieced together by Jimmy Page. It says executive producer Peter Grant on Swan Song Records. And it was released in uh, 1982. Jimmy Page did a lot of post-production work on this record to get it ready for release. And one of the songs needed a vocal track, which Robert Plant dutifully delivered on said track in order to get this album ready for release. This album has a notorious reputation. If you were to watch a lot of these Led Zeppelin album rankings on YouTube, you'll find this one at the bottom of a lot of people's lists. For me, um, I beg to differ. And I'm here tonight to make a case that this is actually a, a, a very solid Led Zeppelin album. Uh, the other um, point to me is they never play any of these songs on the radio. I've never really heard anything from Coda on the radio at all unless, you know, there was some special Zeppelin thing on the radio where maybe they'd play a deep track or something like that, but that might be another point too. I don't know. You tell me. Have you ever heard any songs from Coda on the radio? Yes, overall, it does have that 80s production sound, very contemporary for the time, but yet I'm also saying that that sound was also heard on In Through the Outdoor. In Through the Outdoor, in hindsight, showed everybody how they would sound in the 80s. Like, you hear Robert Plant's voice on In Through the Outdoor, the same way you would hear him on all those MTV hits that he had. Jimmy Page further expounded his interest in, in a guitar orchestra with um, a very large but yet dense harmonic sound that is unique. I mean, I've never heard anybody record their guitars to sound like the way Jimmy Page does it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's unique. So I think that might be another reason that uh, uh, people may not like this record is because maybe it does remind them more of solo Zeppelin, you know, from the 80s, rather than that Zeppelin sound of Zeppelin 1 through physical graffiti, you know, that classic Zeppelin uh, era, right? You know, I think physical graffiti kind of concludes that um, sort of production sound that was started on Led Zeppelin 1. Uh, but I would also say, too, that the production sound that they would get on Presence and in through the outdoor and via Coda is also prevalent on Houses of the Holy and uh, and Led Zeppelin three. So again, the, the, you know, this is not an anomaly in the Zeppelin uh, ouvre <laughs> and sound. You know what I mean? So. That's the way I look at it. You you get pretty much get everything that Zeppelin uh, is known for. You know, you get we're gonna groove with a bombastic, uh, high energy, early Zeppelin backing track with some overdub guitars in the '80s. Poor Tom, you know, there's your acoustic track. You know, that's 
got, you know, a little breeze to it, a little jaunty and bouncy, so it evokes that early Zeppelin sound that you would get with Zeppelin 3 and Zeppelin 4. I Can't Quit You Baby, you got Zeppelin playing the blues, and uh, it was essentially a live track, so you get Zeppelin Live from 1970. Early Zeppelin Live was on point, man, and they were making a statement. Uh, Walter's Walk. That one, now this one, even though, again, it was recorded, the basic tracks in 72, Plant's voice has that because he recorded it in 1981 or 82, whatever it was, to get it ready for release, does have that 80s sound to it, you know, or the same sound that uh, you, you heard on In Through the Outdoor. So this one is really a mesh of classic Zeppelin from 72, the House of the Holy Era. But yet, through its production on this record, it sounds like a contemporary song from In Through the Outdoor. You know, that, that type of period. Ozone Baby. This one is nice and steady and get your foot tapping. And could have easily been something off presence, you know? It's, again, you know, they take those riffs and twist them around. You can hear elements of past Zeppelin on there. It's wholly Led Zeppelin. This album is not an anomaly. Uh, Darlene, twisting and turning through early rock and roll, and, and that sound, uh, as, it, as they did it in 1978. Bonzo's Montro, a nice composed through sound sculpture. That was a great matchup with Bonham and uh, Jimmy Page, you know, overseeing it. Warren and Taron is one of the most, again, it's got that dense yet heavy sound of Jimmy Page's without sounding typical heavy metal. It's unique. Jimmy Page had that unique sound and it, it's heavy. Uh, it's fast at times, you know, it, it's a rollicking riff. It's, it's, um, bombastic just like uh they proved on that opening track of we're gonna groove man and they close out their career with an upbeat on fire total zeppelin attack i think this is a great album i encourage all zeppelin fans to revisit it led zeppelin's coda is it a throwaway album or a misunderstood hidden classic album i don't know you tell me i would love to hear your thoughts on this album it's very controversial in the zeppelin community i think it's a, a solid album that's the way i see it how do you see it i really do want to know and uh, that's why i made this video i think it's a uh, just as good a zeppelin album as any of them i want to thank you for watching if you like this video please Click the thumbs up icon, give it a like, and if you really like what we do, is we we'll just sit the camera down, hold stuff up, and talk about it. Well, subscribe to the channel then, and uh, click all notifications so you're always reminded when uh, whenever a new video posts. And with that, again, I want to thank you for watching. You are always welcome to visit me here in the sanctuary. And always remember to never be afraid to step into the pleasure den of the absurd.